might be a little heavy. Anyway, uh, give you something to think about uh, during the lunch break. Yeah, I hope not. Then it wouldn't be very enjoyable. You're angry with your lunch. Um, yeah. So there's different ways to look at anger. Like I was saying yesterday. Well, um, yeah. The most important thing I think at the outset is to, um, to define like what is it we mean by anger, right? Because we can mean all different things. Um, so, yeah. Why don't why don't we just kind of maybe I'll get input from you all because we're all different. We all kind of have different ideas, different experience. Get some input from you all. Like, well, what when you meet, when you talk about anger, think about anger. Like, what what do you mean? And then we can kind of try to gradually uh, narrow down, clarify what exactly we mean uh, by anger. So, um, yeah, one way is to look at you know, different experiences of anger we have. Again, when we ourselves have gotten angry, when we see other people get angry, when um, you know we're a third person observing one person get angry at another person, um, you know, think of all the kind of different experiences ways we've experienced um, anger. Um, but here we want to focus more on like the mind, right? Because we want to recognize in our own mind when, um, when, we, when we're about to get angry, when we actually do get angry, uh, and then learn how to deal with it. Learn like what are some of the yeah, um, pros and cons, that kind of attitude, and then learn how to um, yeah, deal with it more constructively. So first, let's yeah. How do we define? How do we how do we define anger? What do you think are some defining characteristics of anger? Yes. This is one thing that which I observe is whenever the lack of energy, there is a lot of stress is going on, mm -hmm. and without proper sleep, then anger is getting more easily coming. Yeah. Uh, for small. For right. example, in the, in the morning after fresh sleep, yeah. like uh, what the same situations are happening. It's yeah. not getting anger, but in the evening, if the after office and tired, after we are tired, the same situation is happening, then uh, anger is coming. The way right. of reaction is changing. Right, right. So for those of you maybe you couldn't hear, it saying when we're um, when we're tired, when we're busy, or have a lot of stress, and our energy is low, mm -hmm. then we're more prone to become angry. Yeah, same thing happen. One thing happens that can provoke us at the end of the day when we're tired and stressed. And we get angry at the same thing happened in the morning when we're fresh and feel like you know um, um, well rested. It wouldn't make us angry at all, right? So, yeah, I think that's very true. Um, but that's not really getting at exactly what is the anger. It's more like looking at the different conditions that make us more prone to become angry, being tired and stressed. Yeah, like a trigger. But the question here is, what do we actually mean by anger? What is it? When we say getting angry, like what do we mean? Like what are we talking about? What is that? Hold on, hold on. When we raise a hand, otherwise it becomes kind of chaotic. Okay, one, two, three, and four. Okay, sound good? To be an angle, definition of angle would be going out of a state of normalcy, a situation where things are out intended to achieve a normal scenario. There's some disturbance in equilibrium, leading not to the fulfillment of the objective. Okay, so, so Sangha is saying when our equilibrium is disturbed, when we're not, our mind's not in a normal state of equilibrium, but it's, it's disturbed and goes out of that. Um, yeah. But then there's many other kinds of minds that are like anxiety or worry, which are also disturbed, um, but they're not, but they're not anger, right? So those leads as a trigger point. Those can be trigger anger, yeah. But yeah, uh, yes. What's your name? So, Girija. 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 Girija, okay. Yes. So for me, anger is when I'm in a state of comparison of what is with what I want it to be. Mm -hmm. And then I'm unhappy. I'm putting a negative value to it that this is not what it should be. Mm -hmm. So when I'm putting an emotion and doing a comparison, a judgmental state, mm -hmm. for me that's when I'm starting to build anger. So and then I can of course link it to all possible past memories of how I have been here before <laughs> to yeah. modify and amplify that state. Yeah. So for me, that's, that's where anger starts. Yeah, Girija, that's a very good point. So you're saying when uh, you get angry, you find when you want something to be a certain way, yeah. but then things are not that way. And so they disagree. There's a dis, uh, disharmony between and the way you want things to be. Emotional 
negative value to it. Then yeah. the, just observing like is still okay. Bad. Yeah, this is bad. This yeah. shouldn't be this. Yeah, yeah. Then I have started to yeah. like build it. Yeah, that brings up two very good points, is, which is typically explained in Buddhist presentation of anger. One is every, and so this is a good question for you to analyze, is this true or not? And every instance of anger arises from attachment. So every, every time we get angry, if we look at back why we're getting angry, it's because, just as you're saying, we're attached to things being a certain way. Someone treating me a certain way, or you know, things being a certain way, me acting a certain way. We're, we have a, a, a desire for things to be one way, and then the opposite happens. So our attachment is being that very opposite. The, our attachment wants things to be one way. We're attached to things being one way because we perceive that as you know, pleasant or a cause of well-being or happiness. So we're attached to things being one way, and then the very opposite happens, and that provokes us to be angry. Um, so the one is every instance of anger. So is, this tr is it true that every instance of anger is preceded by a mind of attachment to something, to some being. So this is what we can analyze our own experience to, to see if is that true. And then the second thing is that, um, yeah, a precursor to any afflictive emotion, uh, in this case anger, is what's called, is a judgment. Which is, uh, so a more technical term is, uh, maybe a more descriptive term also is, it's called, um, you know, uh, inappropriate, inappropriately believing concepts inappropriately or incorrectly believing concepts. So we have a concept, just like you're saying, oh, this is bad. First we make a, a judgment about something. So we want something to be one way, then somebody's doing something else or something different than what we want is happening. And then we, we, we make a judgment, this is bad. So that judgment arises from our desire, right? We desire things to be one way, then the opposite happens. Then we make a judgment, this is bad. So that, that judgment is the in. Uh, inappropriately or inco incorrectly believing concept. So we could, we have a concept that causes a kind of. It's not we're not looking at things ob objectively anymore. Rather, based on our our own kind of uh, desires, our own values, our own expectations. Yeah. Then that colors everything. Then in in relation to our expectations, that if this if this happens, it's good, and if this happens, it's bad. It's not that objectively from the from the side of just. The neutral reality: this is good, this is bad. It's it's colored by our desire, our expectations, like our kind of um, our, our kind of um, yeah yeah our kind of picture, the way we make of the world in order to fit kind of my my needs. Then this becomes good, and this becomes bad. So any any afflictive emotion, especially anger in this case, is preceded by a kind of value judgment. But usually we perceive that judgment as being not just a projection of our mind, as if that is the reality. It's from the side of the object, it's bad. It's not just I decide, I, I'm judging it to be bad, but it looks like it really is bad from there. Therefore, I'm justified getting angry about it. Right? So, yeah, there's these two things. Every, every moment of anger is preceded by attachment to something, and then that's being counteracted. And then we place a value judgment, like this is bad. Yeah. And anger is always preceded by a negative value judgment. Wait, wait, she had her hand up first. I'll come back to you. You're asked for Subhashini. Actually, she said exactly what I Oh, really? Saying. Okay, okay. Then I'll go on to Subhashini and then Sadhana. Yes, Sadhana. Uh, Subhashini? Uh, it's linked to an expectation of what it should be, what to be. Mm -hmm. uh, like I walked into the lab yesterday to give mm -hmm. a sample. Mm -hmm. She didn't have a sanitizer. I, mean, mm -hmm. I said, what are you doing? I said, mm -hmm. don't wash your hands. Yeah. And you're using that uh, hard machine. Yeah. So I said, don't you have a sanitizer? She said, no. Mm. I said, what kind of lab is this? Mm. Yeah. And then? What? <laughs> <laughs> she said, I said, what do you mean, what? I said, what do you mean, what? Because there was a wash basin and said, yeah. I just washed my hands. She said, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, so that's so you're you're uh, kind of uh, reinstate re reinforcing the same thing she's saying, yes. right? There's an expectation. Yes. Things should be a certain way, and then they're not, and then that provokes us to get. Uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, one you said it's an object when you uh, get angry. Like for example, yeah. Subhashini told about the sanitizer she was not using. Yes. The other thing in a global perspective that I see, like you know, um, we're spoiling our, um, you know, like creating.
creating lots of pollution with the uh, man-made activities, okay? Yeah, burning fossil fuels and Whatever. stuff. Whatever, okay, yeah. that is one. And second, like, uh, for example, the Chinese government, how they've, one of the country, like, you know, the, the way they've treated and killed a lot of innocent people, yeah. okay, and uh, yeah. you know, they made them move. Yeah. And even in the Gulf countries, how they, you know, kill the innocent people, yes. right? So how do I see, I get angry when I, you know, see that situation. Now, here we're trying to define what anger is. What is anger? So. Yeah, what is anger, right? Yeah. So my question is, like, uh -huh. in that scenario, I get angry. Okay. So, is it angry or is it upset? You know, what is that? Well, well uh, yeah, 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 okay. It's like analytical things are happening. Right. So, I'm yes. just trying to define what anger is. Yeah, yeah exactly. By distinguishing about, between any time you get upset about something, some injustice, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like global pollution or you know, uh, genocide, yeah, 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 and so forth. What's the negative reaction to your sadness or being? Yeah. So what's the difference between you know, yeah, just angry. being upset about something that you think is wrong, or even I mean, you're talking about kind of big. Wait, wait, some you know, You're talking about big global things, but it can be even one person doing something you think is is wrong, is bad, and being upset about that versus getting angry. Right. Is every instance of being upset about some injustice, anger? Do you think? What do you think? So take an example uh, on the social media. If you see such things, at times you feel sad think, and sorrow. And you, no, I get angry right. sometimes. And you try to Please, react. So to it. Unaware but, of what is happening. Yeah, yeah. But do you have any way to distinguish, like, in your in your own? Do you distinguish between when you you feel justifiably upset and outraged about something someone's doing versus getting angry? Is it the same or is it different? I just want to help is it upset or getting angry? <laughs> um, yeah, it's difficult. No, it's difficult to distinguish. Well, in the, uh, I, can, I mean, the easiest way is always to look back what did the previous kind of, uh, kind of people who thought about this a lot, what did they kind of come, conclusion they come to? Well, one, I mean, one, one part of the definition of anger is um, that you, there's the wish to harm. Right? Wish to harm the object of your anger, right? So if, if you look at, like, you know, um, people using... Yeah. But to express a kind of anger, you have to be discontent with what they're doing. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, yeah, let's look at it. Let's look, kind of look at it a little more detail. So I'm saying what's in the definition of it, generally, definition of anger is something like this. It's, a, it's an afflictive emotion. So when it arises in your mind, it disturbs the peace of the mind. It doesn't bring more peace. Whereas like loving kindness, you can say you try to generate loving kindness towards someone, it brings more and more peace in the mind. Anger is very opposite. It brings more disturbance in the mind, as any afflictive emotion does, right? So it's an afflictive emotion. Um, and whereas like attachment is an afflictive emotion also, but it looks at, it, it looks at and exaggerates the positive qualities of things. If we're, if we're attached to a person, we exclusively look at you know, attractive, positive things we see about the person rather than the negative. Whereas anger is the very opposite. It, it observes and focuses on the negative aspects of the object of anger at the exclusion of seeing anything positive. Like, so when we're angry at a person, at that time we're not thinking how generous and kind and you know, attractive they are. We're thinking how awful and terrible and how they said this and they did that. And the same with a company or you know, a group of people. When we're angry, it, it, it focuses exclusively on negative characteristics that we perceive, and it blinds us to seeing anything positive about it. Right? So that's another aspect. It disturbs the mind, focuses exclusively on the negative, and exaggerates the negative. Just as, again, we compare with attachment, whereas attachment exaggerates the positive about whatever. If we're attached to chocolate, then I exaggerate how, how it's going to, you know, how satisfying it's going to be, and I don't, I don't think about how I'm going to feel so, like, you know, kind of gross after I eat too much of it, right? I just think about the attachment only sees the deliciousness of it and exaggerates that, right? That's why, um, you know, oftentimes, like, if we're traveling someplace and we don't have, like, food that we're used to and we're we kind of dreaming about food that we're used to eating and how good it's going to be, but then we actually go there and eat it and it's not, it's not as good as what we were imagining because our attachment exaggerates it. So in the same way, just as attachment looks at the positive aspects of the object of attachment and exaggerates those, anger looks at the negative aspects of the object of anger and exaggerates the negative aspects, kind of totally grows them out of proportion, some kind of reality. Um, and then this last part, then anger is, is, 
it, it involves an intention to harm the object of, of our anger, right? Um, to somehow feel like if it's a person to belittle or denigrate or, you know, in an extreme case, in an extreme case, physically harm, but somehow to, to like, I mean, in a, in a, in a more mild way, to be, to be separated from. Like, anger and attachment are these two opposites, opposite poles. So, whereas attachment, we're attached to something, we want to draw it close. We want to possess it. We want to enjoy it. We want to be, be in contact with it. With anger, it's the very opposite. We want to push away. We want to get out of our life. We want to, you know, just, we might say, like, get out of here. I don't want to see you. No. We, want, we want to not, it to not exist, right? So in that way, I mean, those are all kind of shades of meaning when we say we want to destroy the object. It doesn't mean literally like, you know, blow it up or cut it up or, or smash it to pieces. But it means kind of like push away, get out of, be kind of eliminate from our world in a way. So um, anger involves that. So I think one, um, I mean, outrage, being outraged about some injustice, it can easily lead into anger, but it, it, that's, that's why we have to check. I mean, being outraged about some, you know, some terrible thing that, you know, um, one oppressor did to another, it can be the case that it's not that we want to harm the oppressor or we want to harm the oppressed. We want both of them to be well and happy, but it's that we see, like, there is a fact of one person harming another person or one group of people harming another group of people, and we see that that is wrong. That's, that's bad for, for both, actually. Um, but the problem is when we, we kind of, our, our, our concern becomes completely polarized, where we only care about the one being harmed and the one that's doing the harming, we think, well, they're acting in that way justifies them being utterly destroyed and having no concern about their welfare whatsoever. Right? That's, that's kind of a wrong state of the mind. So it's, it's important, that's why it's important to distinguish the person from the behavior. Right? We can totally reject and, and, and think as... Uh, completely wrong and in, uh, inadmiss inadmissible and um, inexcusable a person's behavior and react in a very strong way opposing and showing our disapproval of that behavior but still care about the person. Right? Anger, is, it doesn't do that. It doesn't distinguish between the behavior and the person. Rather, it sees a person's behavior and really dislike that behavior, see it as wrong, but then completely merge that dislike with the person. So our dislike for that behavior becomes completely wrapped up. It's all one package. We dislike that person. And instead of wanting justifiably to stop the behavior, it spreads to wanting to completely stop that person, you know, destroy that person. That's clearly anger, right? So that's why it's important to, just, to see how a person and their behavior are two separate things. When we look at ourselves, our own behavior, it's easy to distinguish, right? We do something that's very hurtful to someone, very wrong and very bad, we can recognize, I mean, for a time we might feel like, oh, I'm a terrible person, and kind of go in a guilt trip, but over time, you know, we forgive ourselves and recognize, well, actually, I'm not such a bad person, I just got, you know, I got caught up with a set of wrong ideas, I was kind of, kind of um, um, overcome by you know, my emotion, I wasn't thinking clearly, I wasn't being um, considerate at that time, and so I did these things that now I regret. So when we, when we generate regret for our own actions, clearly, there's a difference between me, the person who did something that was bad, but that doesn't mean I'm a bad person. Like, that was just the way I acted at that time, however terrible it was, but I'm not equivalent to that. So, when we look at our own case, we can easily distinguish between the person, the actor, and the actions. And we can, um, we can um, disapprove of the action, but still have concern for the person, ourselves. But in the case of other people, it's much more difficult. We're much more prone just to mix it all together and when we disapprove of the action, also completely disapprove of the person, having no concern for them. So at that time, when you're, you're angry about someone's actions and you're, you're angry at the person, then it clearly it's, it's, well, I mean, maybe I misspoke there. When, you, when you're, I mean, let's see. Well, Shanti Deva, this famous uh, Buddhist um, uh, scholar, practitioner of the, uh, I think like the 7th century, you can say, I'm not sure of the dates, but anyway, ancient India. Um, he, one, he gives a lot of advice about, a lot of good advice about how dealing with anger. And he says at one point, if you're going to get angry at anything, don't get angry at the person, 
get angry at, at, at their, the afflictive emotions in their mind. So it's similar. I mean, why, when a person does something that we find very hurtful or offensive or terrible, why do they do that? We have to go below the surface, go a couple steps back from the action. Um, first, they did this action, the action is performed by that person. But that per person, why are they engaging in the action? Because they're on, they have a lot of distorted ideas in their own mind, distorted concepts, distorted emotions. Their own mind is disturbed. Um, and, and, um, and yeah, they're on, it's like they're a slave, but they're under the control of their own afflictive emotions. So he says, he recommends, instead of getting angry at the person, get angry at the person's the wrong, the anger in that person's mind, the afflictive emotions in that person's mind, because that's what needs to be eliminated, actually. The person, because the person has the potential for every, to, to develop every positive quality, every goodness, to be a very good person. It's like, that's the fundamental, I mean, that's another kind of basis for looking at anger in, in the Buddhist context, is that there's an assumption that every person, no matter how badly they act, no matter how much they harm others in, in one lifetime, they all, every you know, human being, animal, you know, spirit, whatever kind of sentient being exists, they all have the, the, the seed of enlightenment. They all have the potential for to develop every positive quality, loving kindness, patience, generosity, wisdom. And so, so in that way, it's, it's kind of inexcusable to ever have the wish to harm a person. When you have the wish to harm the person, it's like you're wishing to, to to undermine and um, impair their ability to develop every positive quality. So in, in the long run, that, that directly harms you. I mean, indirectly harms you in the long run. So while well, we can be, because I misspoke because I said we can be angry at the person's action, but even that, is that productive or not? No? So to be angry at a person's actions, I'm not sure. I mean, we could want to see someone engaging in harmful actions and want to stop that action, right? But I'm not sure, that's not really being angry at action, that's because that's a skillful means. Does our mind necessarily have to be disturbed when we... I mean, these are all things, there's so much to, like, to think about, analyze, um, but... Can you yeah. see as a mind disturbed, or like we have a clarity that there is some injustice going on. Mm. So, uh, practicing Buddhism, like, as we know that, you know, we have mm. to see that the object, uh, the person is not creating that injustice their mental afflictions is creating that particular scenario. Yeah. So instead of doing a protest, we have to do it in a silent, should we do a silent protest or just keep going? I mean, you mean protest, like street protest? Silent protest. Street, yeah, street yeah. protest. Versus street, street protest? protest. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with street protests. It's not like... <laughs> we could go out on the street and march and express our opinions. Yeah. You know, in fashion in India, it's Yeah? Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe I started to kind of jumble up a lot of different things. So, what are do you, uh, do you have some clarity about what anger is? Can we say, more? Uh, the, when yeah. could we just uh, add the fact that you perceive mm -hmm. being hurt and therefore you wish to harm? Um, yeah, but it, is it the case in every case of anger do you perceive being hurt and therefore you wish to harm? I don't think so. It's well, often is. I mean, often you perceive being hurt, and therefore you wish to retaliate. But not necessarily, I think. Uh, I think that's often the case. But injustice. You perceive something in it, you know? Well, like, you know, you could, like, well, like, in the text it describe different objects of anger. Um, well, first there's an animate and inanimate. You can get angry at another person or at another inanimate object, or at yourself, right? also. And then the, of the persons, you can get angry at someone who's your enemy, yeah. someone who's harmed you, it means, or someone who's an enemy of your friend, for example. So you see a, someone harming a friend or a, a, a mutual third party, and then you get angry about that. So in that case, it's not that you're reacting to harm that was done to you, but you're reacting Some to way. harm done, that you perceive as done to someone else. You're getting angry with a child? Yeah. Uh, parent getting angry with a child, yeah. It can be... It can be, but I mean, but oftentimes, I mean, that's a good example because, um, I mean, it can, it can, so how do you distinguish? Maybe I'll throw the question out to you rather than try to address it myself. How do you distinguish, like, a parent getting angry at a child versus a parent using kind of um, very forceful, kind of wrathful means to stop a child's harmful behavior, right? 
Like, say a child, a child is engaging in harmful, like lighting fires again and again in the woods behind the house or something like that. I used to do that, so <laughs> Or going out drinking again and again, like lying about, you know, lying to their parents and then going out like drinking and partying with friends again and again or something like that. So how do you distinguish on one, like one case, a parent gets angry at the child about that, and another case, they scold and use very forceful means, but they're not angry. But externally, externally the behavior can look almost exactly the same. But how do you distinguish whether there's anger in the mind or not? So now I'm giving you the official definition of anger. How do you One thing, one thing I could yeah. say is after they express the scolding, yeah. immediately within a few seconds they are relieved. And they, are, they can smile. Yeah. That, that's a parameter of measurement. Yeah. Whether they are uh, really took the anger inside and they are worrying, keep on worrying. Otherwise, they took it as a uh, what is the right action to do, and they re uh, responded. And after that, they are free. Yeah. That's yeah. art. Yeah, very good. Yeah. So his his answer is, is very good, right on the mark. Is that one one indicator is after they give the scolding, if they immediately recover from it and they can show affection and just re you know, relate in an ordinary way, it shows they didn't really take it deep in the mind and they didn't really get deeply angry. Because if you're deeply angry, then you don't get over it like that quickly. You know? It stays because the mind is, becomes very disturbed, right? Whereas if you're just out of affection, really seeing a need to 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 you know, express your strong disapproval and, you know, um, and dislike of what they're doing in that moment, then act in a certain way, but don't it doesn't undermine your caring about the person. Right? Whereas anger undermines your caring about the person. So yeah. that's one kind of. Um, yeah, one way to distinguish. That's probably been one of the best ways. So you can say the motivation is compassion rather than calm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in, in the mind, the motivation is to benefit. Yeah. Compassion, to improve that person. Yeah. yeah. So that will also reflect on the choice of words, maybe, of what you're saying to the other person. It should be. And the, and the amount of control you have, which is, if you're really getting out of control, it shows you're becoming over by anger overcome, overwhelmed by anger. Because anger is is a, such a disturbing mind that when it really gets, you know, really gets strong, you, you can't think rationally, you don't act like in a controlled way. It totally kind of goes, hey, it snowballs. Whereas, yeah, if the mind is not angry and you have, you, you, you have a more clear mind about what needs to be done in this situation to stop this wrong behavior, yeah, there's more control. I think that was your point, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the mind is more controlled. Yeah. So would that even be anger? Because that's uh, reactive. Right, it wouldn't be so anger. That's what I'm saying. Compassion. Yeah, exactly. That wouldn't be anger. That's what I'm saying. That's kind of out. We could call it like outrage or it's just kind of wrathful behavior. You're showing behavior. the anger yes, to make a point, yeah. but you're not really angry. Right, it's like you're showing the face of anger, but you're not actually angry. Angry. So, so yes? sort of like a force of emotion that courses through you. Mm. So I think when we feel the force of emotion rising up, maybe that's the way it's True, that's another characteristic of anger. It's, it's, it, physically, it has a very strong physical component. It's such a strong emotion that your, adre your adrenaline rushes, you feel this energy, this rush of energy like course through you. Um, um, yeah, is that your main point? Yeah, I mean, is, is that a way to spot it? Like, that yeah, that's definitely, yeah, that's definitely a way to spot it. No? Especially when we're, when we're aware that we have a problem with anger. And so we want to, it's, it's easier to deal with anger when it first starts to arise, because it's weak. Once we get really <laughs> angry, it's difficult. We can't think clearly. There's no space in the mind. We're just kind of like acting on, you know, instinct almost, like auto, autopilot. So, so it's easy, but it's easier to deal with when we see ourselves starting to get irritated, starting to make these negative judgments about, oh, that's bad, that's bad, I don't like this. And then there's a physical element too. We can start to feel kind of tightness in the chest or getting a little hot or getting a little, you know, muscles tensing up and this kind of rush of energy coming. So at that moment, if we, we recognize, because we need to look at our experience of getting angry in the past and look at, well, what, you know, what are the things that trigger me? What are the kinds of attachment that I have? I'm attached to people speaking to me this way, or people, you know, not speaking to me this way or attached to this happening. So what are the sort of, triggers that we have and identify those and then and then identify well, what are the first signs you know when we look at our experience of getting angry in the past 
what are the first physical things I, I, I experience, what are the first kind of thoughts that come, that I see lead me into getting angry. And then in the future, we, had, we can identify more clearly, oh, I'm starting to feel that way, so I have to be careful to cool down now or else you know, I'm, going to, I'm going to lose it. Right? So it's true that one of the characteristics of anger is a strong physical like rush of energy and adrenaline and you know, blood comes to the face. And, Sometimes anger is also related to helplessness. Mm -hmm. When you cannot handle the situation. Mm -hmm. For instance, I was not very happy with the cutting off of the internet to the Kashmir Valley mm -hmm. and imprisoning, or what I'm not imprisoning, how's the rest mm -hmm. of their uh, chief ministers? Mm -hmm. so, but I can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's true. Uh, and Sebastian is saying anger can be related to a sense of helplessness. Wanting things to be a certain way and not being able to do anything to change that and then feeling helpless to, to change situations. Yeah. That's, that's but also true. the thing is when you're really overwhelmed by anger, you lose your sense of reason. You can't think straight. Right, yeah. And that's especially easy to see when you're a third you're the third party observer. You see like you're with a group of friends and you see one friend getting angry at another. Then you can see how they, they and then the communication quickly becomes very unclear. So one person saying the other one thing, the other person doesn't hear it, they hear something else, and then they react to that. And then you try to explain and, and kind of reason, but neither one wants to listen because it's like they're and it has a lot to do with pride. When we get angry, there's also a strong sense of ego. And like being you feel justified. You feel like I'm right and the other is wrong. And, and there's no room to think about how I might, some of what I'm thinking might be wrong and some of what the other's doing might be right. There's no space for that kind of finding a middle ground because there's this very strong sense of I'm right and they're wrong and our ego gets very wrapped up in it. And there's a sense that if I back down at all, then I'm, 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 I'm losing, you know. There's very clear win-loss, like either I win or I lose, so like that, yeah. Well, when the, when the anger is already fully arisen, then it's almost it's very difficult to, to change course in that. That's why it's important to, under, to when we first see ourselves getting angry, at that time do something. So, yeah. Um, and how do you deal in that case? Well, I mean, every case has different, I mean, different things that might be appropriate in that case. But one, one could be, oh, I, I hope you're not getting angry, you can say. You know? <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> you know they're angry. It's not, there's no question, but you could say, are you, are you getting angry? To help the person be self-reflective about, because uh, oftentimes the person, we don't realize how, you know, how we're, how we're feeling, how we're acting. So sometimes can just, you know, if you can sit, not sarcastically, but if you can say sincerely, like, you know, oh, are you getting angry? I didn't, you know, I didn't want to upset you. Um, could be one way. Uh, another way could be just try to agree for the time being. You know, if you can say something that they feel like, or just try to repeat to them what they're saying. You know, oh, I hear you saying this, this, this. So the person knows that they're being hurt. You know? um, that could help cool them down. Um, yeah, another. Yeah. Another, I mean, another way could be to try to just, you know. Oh, really? Someone's getting angry at you a lot, huh? Okay. Like, for example, in addition to this, in the same scenario, like, that person has done some wrong deeds. And there's one person who's, you know, like, seeing the two persons interact. And that the other person who's got angry, he's done all nasty, uh, you know, he's telling all the lies. And this person is telling, like, no, you've done, which is unethical, and it is not true. So please, you know, like, uh, it's not according to the rules and regulations. So he just starts getting angry. As Ori told, like, how do you deal that situation? Well, I mean, you, you, your first and foremost responsibility is yourself, right? You need to prevent yourself from getting angry, right? Yeah. So that doesn't... Also, you need to make sure that he feels getting angry yeah. for whatever wrong deeds he's done. And plus he's yeah. uh, arguing for that. Yeah, yeah. So how do you handle that? How do you handle it in terms of like you yourself not getting angry or in terms of pacifying that person? What do you mean? 
or just what you would do? I mean, come on, there's no, like, this is what you do in those situations. I mean, do you expect me to give an answer like that? How do I do that? I can't tell you, this is what you do. Yeah, there's no, there's no, like, easy equation like that. But, but the best, the best, I mean, the, what is the, what, what is the title of this workshop? Mindfulness and overcoming anger with loving kindness. So, does that give you a clue? <laughs> you practice loving kindness. Remember though, one of the precursors to anger is like uh, uh, Giraj? Girija. Girija was pointing out was negative judgments, right? So another person getting angry, if we see that we're, we're looking at all the negative things about them and what they're saying, then it's like we're already feeding into our potential to get angry, right? So we have to be careful about that, careful to have a, try to have an uh, unbiased mind. For every negative thing, look at, try to think a positive thing about the person. That's where, where loving kindness is just generating real concern for the person, right? So that's how, if you can practice uh, loving kindness on a regular basis, and especially then you can draw on that resource when someone's getting angry at you, generate concern for the person, even though you might feel that their, their behavior in that way is totally ridiculous. But you just try to stay in touch with your concern for the well-being of that person, then that helps you not get angry. But um, it's time to stop for lunch now. So we can continue our discussion about anger after lunch, and then we'll meditate a little bit to try to think about our own, our own experiences of anger in the past in different ways. And then we'll talk about more, and then we'll, um, we'll um, practice loving kindness right, towards that. So enjoy your lunch, and uh, yeah, see you back at 2.30. We resume at 2.30.